Our first sermon scripture comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went down to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judah, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The second scripture is from Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 58. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I'm really glad to uh, see you this morning. And when I came to church this morning, I thought, I'll be the only one who will be at church. And some of you drive from Hemingford, and you guys are hard, hardcore Christian. Okay? Shall we pray? But thank you so much for your love and grace. And please be with us and bless us, Lord. Bless this time. Bless all your blessings so we may know you are here with us. Can you let me pray? Amen. Now Christmas is for everyone and everyone is waiting for Christmas, especially little kids and little children. They are waiting for Christmas because they know their parents are going to give them a you know, Christmas gift. My two boys, Jade and Logan, they are always you know, waiting for Christmas too. When they were little young, I mean, they're still children, but not really a little kid. But when, when they were little, they always ask me, Daddy, what are you going to buy me this Christmas? And I said, you know, I'm going to buy some toys or some books, you know, something that you like to buy. But since last year, my boys, especially Logan, the youngest one, changed his tactic to force me to buy a Christmas gift. Because he said, Daddy, I want to buy this for my, I want to have this for my Christmas. Then I sometimes say, you know, that's too expensive. You know, this year I'm not, I don't have enough budget to buy that gift for you. Then this year he changed his plan. He said, Daddy, I'm praying for Nintendo Switch game console. What do you think? I said, I think you should keep praying. The kids always want something for Christmas, but the thing is that they know their gifts are coming. That's why they love Christmas. It is for sure that they are going to get some Christmas gift. So they are waiting for a Christmas gift. We as a parents waiting for a credit card bill to pay. So we are all waiting for something. You know, part of our lives is waiting on earth. Whether or not you are Christian or non-Christian, you are waiting for something, especially this holiday season. You know, kids are waiting for their Christmas gift. Parents are waiting for their children to visit through this holiday season. You know, people are waiting for their bonus. People are waiting for their flights home. So we are all waiting. I think our life would be fun and easy. We know when we know we are waiting for something, but our life would be fun. We know when we our wish and dream would be accomplished. We know when we know when our waiting 
would be accomplished, would be answered, then our life would be easier and fun. But unfortunately, we cannot figure it out when our waiting is going to end. Now, today, we read the two different passages. One is Luke chapter 2, two and second one is Luke chapter 9. These two stories seem to unrelate to each other. But actually, when you read these two stories deeply, they have two in common. One is the weight. Now, they have to wait. Mary and Joseph have to wait, and Jesus has to wait. But the waiting is not something that they never figured out how long they wait. Their, their wait is not infinite waiting, but the wait is scheduled on time. The wait is something that God already set a time that their waiting is going to end at a certain point of their lives. And Mary and Joseph are waiting for the birth of Jesus. And they know, especially Mary knows exactly the identity of the baby Jesus inside her. She knows where the baby is coming from. Jesus knows that the place here on earth is not the place that he can rest. He knows the place that he is going to go and sacrifice his life. So he's waiting for his mission to be accomplished. He's waiting for the place that he's going to go in two years later. So they all know what's going to happen. So the waiting is not really infinite waiting. The waiting is something that is going to happen soon. So their waiting is scheduled on time. In this uh, waiting, God put them in a specific circumstances. They have no place to go. This is the second thing they have in common. They have no place to go. I would say they become homeless. Mary and Joseph become homeless, and Jesus become homeless. Now Mary and Joseph left their hometown to register their name. They went to a small town called Bethlehem. You know, it was 97 miles journey today. It takes 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem today on freeway. Now, back in those days, the Mary and Joseph had to go through you know, dirt road, you know, river and small stream and hill and, and a cliff, all different types of you know, tough and barren land. So it would take more than 97 miles. I would say you would 150 miles or even 200 miles they had to walk, they had to be patient with cold temperature. They had to go through you know, all the areas that you know, wild animal might would come and attack them. So they had to go through some tough situation. And during those journey, they couldn't find a place to rest. You might assume that back in those days in ancient Israel, not everyone travels like that, like Mary and Joseph. You know, that's not true at all. Even 2,000 years ago, when people travel, they go in a group, and they carry food supply, even put a tent on an animal. Especially they go for long distance journey, more than 50, 100 miles, they always go in a group. So it is unusual that a couple, especially a pregnant woman, they on this type of trip, a trip by themselves, and they have no place to stay. It's very unusual. Jesus has no place to rest. I believe if he wants, he could find 
a good place to stay. He could find a five-star hotel room back in those days. But he didn't because he knows the place where he is is not the real place to rest. He has to go to Golgotha and sacrifice his life for others. That's why he said, I have no place to rest. So they have no place to rest. But it is also designed by the Lord. Maybe it's to those who don't know Christ, those who don't know what God's plan for Jesus and Joseph's and Mary's life, they might say, oh, the life of Joseph, life of Mary, and life of Jesus look reckless. Their lives are drifting away without having any specific direction. They might say, oh, Joseph's and Mary's life get lost, or Jesus' life might get lost. You know, we can say that if you look at the two different stories from human perspective. But God's perspective, what they do, what they are going through, is a schedule on time. It's a plan it by the Lord for his kingdom, for his salvation of human history. So everything is set. They have no place to rest because later God is going to prepare many places for others. They are waiting and waiting, waiting, but the waiting is not infinite waiting. The Messiah is going to come. He's going to show us his salvation and God's love and God's grace to the whole world. So everything is orchestrated by the Lord. Everything is under control of God's sovereignty and God's authority. We have to see those two different stories from God's perspective. So waiting is not really waiting. It's waiting, it's a process that God molding, orchestrating, his plans for whole humanity. Now we know we have to wait patiently, but sometimes it is really hard for us to be patient and wait, especially when we are in need or when we have emergency situation. I have a friend of mine, I have a classmate in the school in Boston, and this is his story. And he came from India uh, seven years ago uh, during, uh, for, during those times of his study in school in Boston. He didn't have any chance to see his parents for six years. Since he's on a student visa, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the foreign student, they are on a visa called F1 visa. It means the foreign student visa. Whoever is on F1 visa have to be careful to go back to their country. They might not be able to come back depending on their financial status. If the U.S. Embassy says that, oh, you're going back to the state, but your finance is not enough, then they're going to reject your visa. So the guy who's studying in uh, the school in Boston decided not to visit his parents in India, even though he has some finance, but that was not enough. So he just working and studying in Boston and waiting for time to visit his family. Then one day last year, a summer 2018, the group of professors are planning to visit uh, India for a, their research study. So they asked my friend to join them as a member of the research and, and a translator. The thing is that this, cut of, this type of research study is funded by the school, so my friend could have a chance to get a new visa when he visits India. At the same time, his church was planning to send a short mission, mission team to India last year summer. But the thing is that the place that the mission team is going to visit 
was only 10 miles away from his home. Also, the date that the mission team is going to go to India is one week after the last day of the research group is going to visit India. So he went to India with the research group. Then in two weeks, he got a one week in a kind of period of time that he can rest. He visited his family and renew his visa, then joined the mission team. Everything is funded by the school and the church. Everything is set by the Lord. He's praying, 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 but his prayer was accomplished by God's perfect timing. You know, we are waiting for many things. You know, I wish my life would have been better if God would have told me a long time ago when I came to this country, Jay, you know what? 2005, you're going to meet Susan, you're going to marry. In 2012, you're going to be ordained. In 2015, you're going to go to Nebraska and become a pastor there. My life would have been better if God would have told me about whole my schedule. Would my life be better if God would have told me all the things, what's going to happen? Sometimes we are disillusioned. Oh, why doesn't God tell me when my prayer is going to be answered? During the times of waiting, God molding us, strengthen our faith. He's going to make me the person who he wants us to be. That's why God never tells us when our prayer is going to be answered. So we have to wait. But also it is really hard for us to wait. One major way that we can be patient and waiting for the Lord is we have to remind ourselves of the fact that what we are waiting is not for what we desire to have. It's not what we want to have. What we are waiting is for what God wants to do in our life, what God what things has to be done according to God's timetable. Joseph and Mary, Jesus, they're waiting, but their waiting was accomplished through a way that the things has to be done according to God's timetable, according to God's plan. That's what we have for. That's what we wait for. During the waiting, our faith would be strength. We always see what God truly does in our life. That's why we have to wait and patiently. Ultimately, your life and my life will be fruitful and blessed by the Lord when God's time is perfect, when God comes to our lives. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you so much for your love and grace. We are always waiting, Lord. We're waiting for something. But our waiting is not for what we want. It's for what you want in our lives. You're going to answer our prayer according to your timetable, according to your plan. Help us believe the Lord. Help us truly trust that you are coming to us and show us what we need to do and who we need to be. Thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen.